I would like to welcome everybody to our July Synergy Call. And I can't tell you how excited I have been to have this call uh, with our featured speaker, Russell Mariani. I am just um, one of his biggest fans. And um, I met him obviously uh, at the time that I met Brian and grateful and have been hearing about Russell for years from Carol Montgomery, knowing you for decades. Um, and I just wanted to share with everybody, he's just, he's the real deal. He's just the most amazing, giving, caring, kindest man. Um, I was going through some challenges earlier in the year he immediately, um, you know, we connected, reached out, talked me through several different ideas and uh, what I could do, um, and also made me aware of, you know, not just the food I was eating and, but the water cure um, diet. I'm happy to sit here with you all. I feel absolutely fabulous. I lost 20 pounds, Russell, um, and I've been able to keep it off. I lost 20 in almost the first 30 days. My uh, working with moving to the water cure, I am very cautious, you know, making sure I drink half the water and um, get it as close to body temperature. So I know you're going to share all that, but you truly did change my life as well as many other people that I know you thousands that you have helped since the 1980s. But I just want to honor you for everything you do in service to others and helping them on their health journeys and wellness journeys. And we're grateful you've taken the time this evening to share with our team and many others that will be on the call later that listen to the recordings. You're a gift to our world and all of our uh, ohana that we call from Regenerous. So I'm going to turn it over to Brian, but thank you. Thank you for being here. And I want to acknowledge your beautiful wife, um, Megan, who has also just welcomed me um, into the family and been so kind and helped me in so many ways. So thank you for being here as well, Megan. Really appreciate that. Um, Brian, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Well, thank you, Cindy, uh, for that beautiful introduction and for your, um, your personal testaments to Russell. That's very kind and generous. Um, and I just want to say that this call is possible and powered by Regenerous. Um, that is the platform that we're participating in. And we're very, very grateful uh, for the opportunity to speak to everyone tonight on behalf of Regenerous. So this is uh, an extra special night for, for me, um, you know, looking out at all of your faces, it's, um, you know, it, this, is, this is a really, really empowered um, special group of people. And uh, it's awesome to be here live with you. And we do hope um, that you share this video far and wide so that it can really touch lives and do what we're all here to do, which is to collaborate together to be a force for good and make the world a better place. So thank you to Regenerous for giving us this opportunity. And um, I'll make this pretty brief. Our featured presenter tonight is my father, Russell Mariani. I have been very blessed um, my whole life to understand and really be given the highest quality food, but more important than that, um, an education from birth around what food really is, what health is, what I should be putting in my body, what I shouldn't. Um, and I'm very, very grateful to have grown up with that and to be able to enjoy life and not be burdened by terrible diseases and things of that nature. And I owe that to uh, my parents, Russell and Megan. So I'm excited for Russell to really dive in and just drop some golden nuggets um, for all of you here live and for everyone that watches the recording. Russell is going to dive into the seven root cause areas that he has found over his 40 year career to really be the most important principles for us all to practice over time to achieve optimal health. And he's going to really focus in on one of those principles, which is proper daily hydration. And without further ado, Russell, the floor is yours. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for that great introduction. Um, thank you, Cindy, for your kind words. Thank you, Carol Montgomery, for connecting us to Cindy. Um, 
everyone. Uh, hello, Olivia. I just saw you come on. And um, so, so in the in the short time that we have tonight, I want to share a few things. I, I'm going to just go over what the seven root cause areas are, what this health model, functional medicine, functional nutrition, integrative medicine uh, is, and then focus primarily on the water cure. So, um, you know, I, I think the, the, the most important principle for me in the world of functional medicine is that number one, the body is constantly healing itself. It's like every cell of the body is genetically programmed to function normally. And when everything is functioning normally, there's no possibility of dis-ease because dis-ease is the very opposite of ease. And ease is normal functioning. So that's literally the first principle. And growing up in a world of allopathic medicine that is based on the study of pathology, that's what the word allopathic means, it's not the study of health. Everybody goes to their doctors with a health problem, and the doctor isn't trained to teach you about how to be healthy. The doctors are only trained to intervene with pharmaceuticals or surgery if you have symptoms. So this other model is infinitely more capable of helping people who want to be healthy to actually become healthy and then stay healthy. So first principle, the body's constantly healing itself. The second principle is when it comes to the choices that we make for breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, beverages, supplements, Medic medications, if we have to take them, all the things that we put into our body, nothing has a neutral impact. There's no such thing as something that you put into your body that's not going to affect you or have no effect. So second principle, nothing is neutral. And that means everything is either helpful or harmful. Everything is either actively moving your body towards homeostasis and balance and healing, or it's actively undermining that process. And so over the years, we've identified seven areas to look for these complementary or insulting habits, behaviors, foods, et cetera. So when everything, nothing is neutral, everything is either complementary and helpful or insulting and harmful. So I'm just going to mention what those seven areas are, and then we'll talk about proper daily hydration. So the first area is mindfulness. And it's not a general mindfulness. It's not just awareness, but it's paying attention to what you already know about your body, things that you already know. So before you even read another book or hear another lecture, if you took out two pieces of paper, and wrote down on one piece of paper all of your insulting habits, things that you already know do not help your body to heal or do not optimize your health and healing. You can make, if you're really good, it would be a short list, but most people can, can write up a pretty lengthy list of things that they know they shouldn't do every day or they know they should only do occasionally. And then on this other list, you want to write down all the things that you know that you do that are totally complementary. And maybe after you write that list, you can add a few things that you already know that if you added or if you started doing would make a significant difference in your health and well-being. And so that's the first step. And before anybody learns anything new, everyone already knows that they have complementary habits and they have insulting habits. And so the basic, the, to me, the essence of the functional model is stop doing the insulting things and focus on the complementary things. And doing that is the key to uh, regaining, maintaining, and optimizing your health. Okay, so that's root cause area number one. Root cause area number two is proper daily hydration, and we will get back to that in just a second. 
Root cause area number three is micronutrient deficiencies. Root cause area number four is macronutrient imbalances. There are two types of nutrients. The ones you can see on your plate or bowl of food, and those are called macronutrients, protein, carbohydrate, complex carbohydrate, fats, fiber. And all the micronutrients, all the things that we cannot see, vitamins, minerals, trace minerals, amino acids, essential fatty acids, et cetera. So most people, many people are deficient in the micronutrients and they consume in the macronutrients more, too many processed foods and not enough organic whole foods. Root cause area number five is intestinal dysbiosis. And that simply means that the intestinal microbiome, the ecosystem of organisms that live in our intestines and dominate our health is out of balance. So we wanna have intestinal symbiosis. We wanna have 80% or more of all the organisms in our gut be probiotic and have a diversity of probiotics. Root cause area number five is oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is at the root of all inflammation and inflammation is at the root of most chronic degenerative type conditions. So basically, you could, say, you could say that everything that's insulting is a form of oxidative stress. And everything that's complementary is a form of addressing and resolving oxidative stress. And root cause area number seven is redox signaling. And some of you know about redox signaling. Some of you know that a supplement has been uh, produced based on redox signaling. But most of, most of us think of, or, or you can think of all the other uh, root cause areas, one through six, as providing raw materials to the body. I mean, nutrition is basically raw materials. And we want to have the right quality and we want to have the right quantity of raw materials. But if we were to build a house, we would order a bunch of raw materials, lumber, screws, nails, roofing slates, shingles, plumbing supplies. But the raw materials would not build themselves. They were just sitting over on the ground over there. So in order to build the house, you have to have a labor force. You have to have carpenters. You have to have plumbers. You have to have people to install the windows. And so redox signaling molecules is the labor force. And everything else that we think about and do and changing our diet and taking supplements, all of those things are in the air and the realm of raw materials. But what we've discovered, science discovered in 1997, that redox signaling molecules are real. The body can become deficient in them just like you can become deficient in water, you can become deficient in vitamins, et cetera. And so it's a very important piece of the puzzle. Okay, so on to proper daily hydration. So this is an area of health and wellness that absolutely nobody disagrees with. If you had a thousand people in a room, a thousand, a hundred percent of those thousand people would say, Absolutely, proper daily hydration is an essential health habit. Almost everybody has their signature water bottle, or they have four or five water bottles at home that they use in various circumstances and conditions. So there's absolutely no question by anybody remotely interested in their health and well being that proper daily hydration is essential. But that is no guarantee that you or people that you love and care about are in fact properly hydrated on a daily basis. So back in uh, 1997, I had been suffering from a variety of interesting symptoms. I won't go into that whole story. And I had, I had sought the advice of many, many people, many practitioners, many doctors, chiropractors, nutritionists, and nobody ever mentioned hydration. And, no, and even if, I'd always say, of course I have good quality water. And I was 
assuming I was drinking enough water, you know, 24 ounces a day or something like that. And then I discovered the work of Dr. B, Feridun Batman Gelich. We call him Dr. B because his last name is hard to pronounce. Back in 1997, and he, after a two-hour conversation on the phone, instructed me that I needed to be drinking half my body weight in ounces of water per day. Well, I weigh 200 pounds, and so that meant I was to be drinking 100 ounces of water a day, to which I add a small amount of sea salt, because the salt contains minerals and trace minerals. Well, I couldn't imagine drinking 100 ounces of water a day. Uh, probably on my, my highest water day, I might have drank 20 to 24 ounces of water, maybe on a hot summer day, maybe 32 ounces of water. And I kept arguing with him on that phone call because I was already waking up three or four times a night to pee. And I couldn't imagine drinking 100 ounces of water. I'd be peeing all day and peeing all night. And I kept saying this to him. I said, you don't understand. I'm already you know, peeing way too often. And he said, you don't understand. Your bladder is dehydrated. Your whole body is dehydrated. Just trust me, do the water cure correctly and consistently for 28 days in a row and then call me. So finally I agreed. And again, it was very simple instructions. I'm spread the water out through the day, sip the water. Don't drink a lot of water at any one time. Uh, use body temperature water in the morning, room temperature water through the rest of the day. Uh, so I started doing this. Uh, day one, I didn't notice any difference. Day five, I didn't notice any difference. I had been suffering a pretty serious bout of depression. That was the, the thing that was driving me to find a solution, which led me to Dr. B. Day 10, I woke up still feeling miserable, no change, no improvement. On day 14, I drank my 32 ounces of water in the morning and then drank another 32 ounces before lunchtime. And at lunchtime, I went into the kitchen and I started preparing what would be my third quart of water for the day. And as I was preparing it, as I took my first sip of that third quart of water, my body had a complete and radical transformation. And my depression disappeared completely. Not 50%, not 60%, I mean 100%. I felt 100% healthy, energetic, vibrant, vital, alive. It was quite amazing. And Megan, if she's still here, she, she remembers this moment as well because she came running into the kitchen because she thought something had happened. I was literally, you know, jumping up and down and elated. I was so happy. I was so relieved. And then the next phone call I made was to Dr. B. So he had told me that it would take anywhere from 14 to 28 days doing the water cure correctly and consistently for my body to get rehydrated to get properly hydrated and then i could look forward to you know improvement throughout my body and primarily the symptoms of uh, depression and anxiety would leave so from that day in march 1997 to this day in july 2021 i've never had another anxiety attack and I've never had another moment of depression. Now, I had many other health improvements uh, because of being properly hydrated, but that totally changed my life. And I promised Dr. B in that conversation that I would share this uh, happily, freely with everyone that I met, everyone that I had an opportunity to have a conversation with them about their health. I would always put this number one. Now, all the other root cause areas are important and you could make the argument that they're equally important, but um, every cell of your body, when we talk about health, we're talking about the health of individual cells. You have a hundred trillion cells that make up your body, blood cells, 
lymph cells, bone cells, kidney cells, liver cells, heart cells. You have over a thousand times a hundred trillion cells that live in your digestive system. So that ecosystem has an enormous number of cells. But every cell in your body, the minimum amount of water contained in the cell is 50 to 55%. And other cells are up to 80%, 85%, your brain cells, 85% water. So you can see that if there's dehydration at any level, your body is going to struggle. Your body, the cell will not be able to function normally. And guess what? Remember principle number one, the body is constantly healing itself. So in the first moment that your body, that your brain cells, that your liver cells detect that your body is going into dehydration, it's going to manifest a symptom or two or three. And so this was actually the title of Dr. B's first book. It's called Your Body's Many Cries for Water. And his big insight was all negative symptoms are caused by chronic, unintentional chronic dehydration. Now, some of those symptoms could be primarily caused by dehydration, like headaches, fatigue, constipation, indigestion, uh, achiness, inflammation. But so, so again, it goes hand in hand with the notion that the body has incredible intelligence. And if you take care of the body, it will take care of you. And so rather than looking at a negative symptom as something going wrong with your body, of course it is, <laughs> something's going out of normal function, but the symptom is your body's way of trying to get your attention so that you will make the correction and allow your body to be happy again, allow your body to function normally again. So this this area of hydration may be the most dramatic because for many of those negative symptoms, if you will simply rehydrate, those symptoms will go away. So Brian, let me, let me stop there and see if the, we have any questions or, you know, you've heard me talk about this hundreds of times. Did I leave out anything that's really major? Uh, first of all, uh, you know, I can never hear that enough. It's, I, I get a new nugget every time. Um, I think maybe just for more for the audience after tonight, if you could just break down the formula quickly and then we'll open it up for Q and A. Uh, so, okay. I mean, there are seven steps to the water cure. You want to make, you don't want to drink tap water. So you want to make sure you have purified water. And then the formula is half our body weight in ounces per day. Half our, half our body weight in ounces. So if you weigh 200 pounds, 100 ounces. 150 pounds, 75 ounces of water per day. Now that's the minimum. So the water cure is based on body weight and activity level. So for every hour that you're exercising and sweating, you may need to drink an extra 32 ounces of water. You certainly will need to drink 16 ounces of water, possibly 24, possibly 32 ounces of water. If it's hot, it's the summertime, you're out gardening and sweating in the, in the, gar in the yard, in the garden, you're going to need to drink more water. So half our body weight in ounces is the absolute minimum amount of water that we need to drink every day, every 24-hour period. Now, we don't drink while we're sleeping. And so you want to spread the drinking of the water out throughout the day. I generally counsel people to say from the time you wake up until dinner time is when you want to be drinking 90 to 95% of the water. Because if you drink too much water in the evening before going to bed, you'll wake up to pee. Uh, it'll, it'll interrupt your sleep. So I drink 100 ounces of water a day. And I've finished most of that water by dinner time. And I often don't wake up at all 
In other words, drinking all that water does not interrupt my sleep. And if I do wake up, it's usually just one time, you know, within half an hour of the alarm going off. So again, uh, you can drink the right amount of water and you will pee during the day, every hour and a half or so, but it will not interfere with your sleep. Uh, so the other key to the water cure is sipping the water. You don't want to drink eight ounces at a time. You don't want to fall behind and then have to play catch up. So you want to pace yourself. Uh, I was at a, a Zoom on Monday night. We were talking about this. And one of the uh, women said that she would prepare three quarts of water and set them out on her countertop. So she knew exactly how much she was going to drink over the course of that day. And then uh, make sure she drank a certain amount before breakfast and then a certain amount before lunch, and then a certain amount before dinner, so that by dinner time she would have accomplished, you know, 90 to 95 percent of that uh, total amount of water that she needed to be consuming. And of course, a small amount of good quality sea salt. Uh, I prefer the Celtic sea salt, but Himalayan salt is fine. Any good quality sea salt is fine. The reason we add the salt to the water is because the minerals and trace minerals in the salt function as electrolytes, allowing the water molecules to be better absorbed into the cells. We're not drinking the water to flush out our intestines. We're drinking the water to get to every cell in our body. And so the this presence of a very tiny amount of salt, a quarter of a teaspoon or less per quart, is the ideal amount, and that will allow for the uh, better absorption and assimilation of the water molecules into our individual cells. Okay, so you probably saw this when you were here at my house, but I have this big thing right here. And I remember this, it. <laughs> yeah, this is 128 ounces. So one, one gallon. Okay. And this is what I do like one every single day. So I guess for me, when you were saying a hundred ounces, I'm like, okay, I'm drinking 128 and I'm not 200 pounds. So is that too much water that I'm drinking every day? Yeah. Sorry. Is your name Jess? Yes. Okay. Uh, so interesting. On the Zoom I did on Monday night, something similar happened. This woman said that she always drinks a gallon of water a day. And I said, well, how much do you weigh? She said 140 pounds. So it's very rare in my experience to find someone who's drinking too much water, Okay. but it's possible. Now, unless typically the symptoms of too much water is, are, include fatigue and fatigue caused by uh, micronutrient deficiency. See, if you drink too much water, then you end up depleting your body of nutrients. A lot of people think that if they drink a lot of water, it'll just, you know, uh, detoxify them. Mm -hmm. but, and the, the cells do detoxify themselves. But if you drink too much water, you're at risk of uh, diluting your nutrients and uh, depleting your stores of minerals and vitamins, etc. So I would look at the water cure and try to base the amount of water that you drink on your body weight. Okay. And if you weigh 150, that's 75 ounces per day. Again, that's the minimum. And then once you determine your activity level, uh, then you can add more water. But looking at you, Jess, you probably don't need to be drinking a gallon unless you're you know, outside being very physically active. So I know that if we drink coffee, we've got to drink a whole lot more water because it takes water out of our body. Does that, is that still the case with um, with decaffeinated? And I also make the cold process coffee, so it's a whole lot healthier, I know. Does it mean I, I'm not having to drink? I find it really hard to drink the right amount. So, um, and, and what, about, what about alcohol? I've heard before that that's also pulling water out. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct, Carol. So Dr. B was emphatic in saying a couple of things. Number one, that to be properly hydrated, the half our body weight in ounces needs to be water. 
not soda, not juice, not any other beverage, just the water with a little bit of salt. And it, he also said, for every eight ounces of coffee that you drink, you will definitely need an extra 16 ounces to be added in, possibly more, depending on how the coffee affects you. You know, it affects everyone the same way in terms of dehydrating you, but you know how it affects your adrenal glands and other things can vary quite a bit from person to person. So that, so that's that's true. Now, alcohol, the same thing. Probably for every, you know, for every twelve ounces of beer, you're going to need to drink, you know, a little bit more water. Maybe not as much as the coffee. I don't think, you know, beer is as dehydrating as coffee is. And, you know, um, liquor like whiskey or scotch or gin or vodka, things like that, uh, probably for every ounce of um, hard liquor that you would consume, you would need to drink at least another eight ounces of water uh, for sure. I think those, the, the, that, that's what I've observed over the last, you know, 25 years of uh, knowing about the water cure. Are there other things that also dehydrate you? Uh, in terms of food or beverages? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, again, the other reason uh, that's against processed food. So sugar is dehydrating, uh, you know, excess sweets, uh, especially poor quality sweets uh, would be also dehydrating processed food, foods in general. A lot of processed foods have salt added to them to drive you to eat more. And that the salt that they're putting in there isn't organic quality sea salt, it's table salt, which is literally toxic to the body. So yes, there are many things that can contribute to, uh, to the dehydrating process. Thank you, Russell, for being here. I've been enjoying your book. And, um, oh, thank you, Marion. Yeah, and I actually stopped at the point where you asked us to commit. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I had I got, I learned a lot. My husband and I started implementing some of what you suggested up to that point, but I'm still not quite ready to commit to the whole thing. <laughs> Just the truth. That's fine. So, <laughs> what I wanted. Thanks to, for being so honest. Sure, that's this is the vulnerable age, right? <laughs> so I'm practicing. Uh, I just want to confirm something that I noticed when I was with Cindy recently. Uh, when she was telling me how much success she's had with the water cure, <clears throat> I remembered reading that it was important to have the water be body temperature. And you said today in the mornings, <clears throat> and I watched Cindy drinking her water and keeping it in her mouth for a while. So is that the way I just want to confirm because I, I didn't say anything to her, but I noticed it. Yeah, it's one way of warming up the water before swallowing it, for sure. Now, it's, it's interesting. Um, I had a conversation with Dr. B, literally a month before he died. And this was the one question he had for me. Of course, I had already been teaching his water cure for about 15 years. But he had a question about the body temperature water. And I said, well, that's because I am routinely working with people with compromised immune systems and uh, systemic inflammation, inflammatory bowel conditions, people who are, you know, uh, sick, people who are, uh, you know, suffering. And so for people like that, the body temperature water is ideal because if you drink cold water, then your body has to exert energy to warm it up. So that's the basic idea. Okay, there's nothing wrong with cold water. If you can drink cold water and not have any negative experiences, then I say fine. But again, the, the body temperature water is for people who are um, struggling to regain their health. Once you have regained your health and you're feeling absolutely 100% fantastic, then you can feel free <laughs> to experiment and discover if if you can drink room temperature water or cold water, I don't think ice water is ever a good idea. Now, having said that, I prefer body temperature water all through the day. It's July 28th, and I was outside half the day painting the front door of our house. 
Um, I went into the kitchen, heated my water, poured it into this jar, uh, this milk bottle. This is what I drink out of during the day. I prefer the body temperature water. The body temperature water on a hot summer day cools my body faster than drinking cold water. Mm. Sounds crazy. It sounds kind of counterintuitive, but it really works. But I always say to everybody, find what works best for you. Listen to your body, honor what you hear. That's a very important principle in natural healing in general and you know, functional nutrition in particular. Thank you. And I think just before I turn it over to the next person, um, I just wanted to share what works for me in terms of knowing how much water I drink during the day, which is I have two different color bottles. So I have a yellow and a red, and I start with the, my day with the yellow, the red's in the middle of the day. I have to be ending the day with my yellow bottle. If I'm not on my yellow <laughs> bottle by a certain time, it's like, whoa, got to move ahead. That's so great, Marion. I love it. And they're 24 it. ounces each, and I should be doing at least 60. So um, that works really well. That's great. That's I awesome. love that, Marion. Let's, uh, let's coordinate like a, an effort to, to get that to go viral. I love it. <laughs> um, thank you, Marion. And I saw your question, Robin, and I think it got answered, but if it didn't, just like unmute and let me know. But I think your question just got answered. And I'll take the silences. It, it sure did, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> thank, thank you, you. Robin. Yes. Very cool. Uh, I see Liv, waving. Hi, <laughs> thanks Russell for going deep into your seven root causes again. They are always wonderful to, to hear again, especially from your, your own voice. You know, it's, it's great to read it on paper, but to really hear it, you know, come to life, it just gives it a whole new meaning, but I'm definitely a testament to the water care. Um, I've been doing it for over a year now and um same thing with russell i'm still drinking the body temperature warmed water in the summer and uh it's amazing but i have to say it took a little bit of time so i'm just kind of putting it out there to anyone who maybe this is a new thing that you're going to try out but it's definitely a little bit weird at first like a little warm water with some salt and it, it definitely takes some getting used to but once you get into the groove of it it's it is really life-changing and you do think, oh my gosh, I'm going to be like paying the whole day and, and you're not, it's, it's amazing. And you can really feel that your body is actually absorbing what it's supposed to be absorbing. Um, and I have to say too, that I have a few family members who I've, I've gotten them to do the water care as well. And they've benefited from it tremendously. So it's an unbelievable practice that we can all be doing. Um, it's one of the easiest things we can do for our health. So thanks so much, Russell, for uh, giving us all the details tonight. And uh, yeah. To piggyback Thank you. On, uh, Thank you, Olivia. That was beautifully said. Beautiful. I would say to piggyback on that, Olivia, if you as much like, because, you know, obviously I drink a lot of water, but then if I go a day where I'm not drinking the amount of water that I'm usually drinking, I feel it. Like mm -hmm. physically, I feel it. I feel dehydrated. I feel fatigued, thirsty. Like it, it is. Your body gets used to it. It does. It does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Liv, uh, just for that awesome testimonial and just real story. And the best part of what you shared was that you've given that gift to other people. And this is something that we can all share, you know enthusiastically uh with with everybody because it works for everyone um so thank you Liv. thank you Jess. they may laugh at you at first but <laughs> but encourage them encourage them to do it soft soft encouragement <laughs> and then they won't be laughing anymore yeah hey donna i see you over there thank you russell that was awesome as always um i bought that book in the 90s and I spent my whole life telling everybody, drink half your body weight in ounces. And they, yeah, and they all have always said, well, that doesn't make sense. And that's ridiculous. And I love hearing you say this. And um, I have dysbiosis and my GI guy told me only drink warm water. I mean, no matter what, under any and all circumstances. And I just love, and we bought your salt, which is really cool. And, you know, my husband has heart issues. 
and it's always triggered by dehydration. All every time he's gone to the hospital, he has been dehydrated. So I mean, I I just really love what your message, and I just don't think it can be stressed enough. I don't think people realize. So I just really appreciate it. And when my dad had his congestive heart failure, he intentionally would have a cocktail at night because it would open up his lungs from the dehydration. I mean, he breathed the best after he had a shot of tequila. And and so um, that's 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 powerful when it's not when it's an insulting, you know, habit. <laughs> so I just wanted to um, say thank you. Oh. Thank you, Donna. Thanks for being here. And thank, thanks for that. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Donna. There, uh, there just isn't anything more foundational. You know, the, the, the physical structure, 50 to 80% of the physical structure of every cell is water. We think of cells as being solid. Well, they're not nothing. There's nothing that happens in the human body without the presence of water. There's no hormone that's made. There's no enzyme that's made. Nothing happens other than in a fluid matrix. So this is absolutely the most foundational health habit, in my opinion. Yeah, thanks so much, Russell. This was wonderful. Um, I've heard you speak about it. Um, once before, but like everybody said, just picking up additional nugget here and there. Um, I did have one question. What what are your thoughts on adding like citrus to the water, like a lemon or a lime or just a little bit of that? I'm just curious your thoughts on that. Yeah, a lot of people do that. And uh, again, Dr. No, I learned all this from Dr. B. He spent 25 years doing all the research and tried all kinds of experiments. And he, he was very clear and very emphatic that if you add lemon juice or if you add lime juice or any citrus juice to the water, it's not water anymore. And a citrus component of that, of that drink now has to be digested. But water with only a little salt doesn't get digested. In fact, when you, the reason you're sipping the water and you can feel this if you pay attention, the water diffuses through your stomach lining. So every morning I drink 32 ounces of water. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I sit down for breakfast, my stomach is empty. And in the very beginning, I used to think, how is that possible? Where is it all going? Yeah. But if you, drink, if you drink eight ounces at a time, the water will slosh around in your stomach. You can literally hear it sloshing around because it, and it takes longer to absorb eight ounces of water. But if you sip one or two ounces, it disappears instantly. It goes right through the stomach lining, into the blood, and from there to all the cells of your body. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. It, doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean that you can't enjoy citrus in your water. Please feel free, go ahead. Dr. B was simply saying that to do the water cure correctly and consistently, you just want to make sure that half your body weight in ounces of water and salt. And then beyond that, if you want to drink other things, go for it. <laughs> awesome. We've got a really good question here from Becky, actually. Um, and she just wanted some clarity around, like, what would different types of filtered water look like? Number one, um, you mentioned not to use bottled water. So just kind of just speak to that a little bit. And then what would you recommend for people who travel, you know, like, is yeah. there any kind of best method or do you just kind of let yeah. those things go or whatever? So if I said don't drink bottled water, I apologize. That's not what I meant to say. I meant to say don't drink tap water. There, there's no tap water anywhere in the world and certainly nowhere in the United States that is purified. You know, everyone is drinking treated water. You know, if you get your water from the town, if you, you know, very few people these days have their own well. So most people are drinking uh, municipally treated water and that has to uh, measure up to certain EPA standards, but that water is not purified. It's got chlorine in it and all kinds of other contaminants. So, so you want to get a good, what's called a point of use water purifier. There are many different types. I prefer what's called a solid carbon block technology. I won't mention any brand names tonight, but uh, um, 
Uh, that's a very good type of water purifier. It will remove 99.9% .9 of the impurities and contaminants in your tap water, okay? Uh, and so, so in terms of traveling, and, and I tell people if they're, when they're first starting out on the water cure, you know, they don't have to go out and buy a water purifier tomorrow. You'll want to do some homework, do some uh, research and uh, talk to people who have one and ho hopefully get a good referral to a very good quality point of use filter. But in the meantime, go and purchase the best quality spring water, bottled water. So I do recommend that as a transition until you get a good point of use filter. And when traveling, I mean, I think we all, everyone who, of course, we haven't been traveling a lot recently, but prior to the pandemic, anytime I would fly, I would always buy a couple of bottles of Fiji water. And I would go to the, uh, you know, once I went through, um, not customs, but uh, security, I would immediately go to the first place I could buy some bottled water and always ask for warm water. I would not buy the water out of the refrigerator. And it's amazing how many people ask for, you know, room temperature water. So, so that's what I would do. And everyone has their preference for, for bottled water. Uh, but that's, that's my favorite when I'm traveling. I hope that helps. Yeah. And of course, when you're traveling, I mean, this was in the nineties and things, and now a lot of airports do have, you know, water fil filtered water sometimes at really good ones not always but um you can be that's sustainable so you can be sustainable and not buy bottled water that's best case bring your own you know bottle and i i saw carol eyeing me so i was like i need to mention this um so yeah we definitely want to be sustainable there um and of course you can bring your salt you can travel with you know a little bit of salt um that's not a problem uh, great question from Kimberly. Um, she's asking about specifically apple cider vinegar. Is that something that's good on a daily basis or is there another food or vegetable that we should really focus um, on having as a daily uh, habit? So thanks for asking that question. And yes, Carol, I, I didn't mean to promote the uh, excess use of bottled plastic bottles. That's a mistake on my part. Uh, it's really just a short-term strategy. And everyone should have use a, a, wa a water bottle so they don't have to buy uh, bottled plastic bottles. So thanks for that. Thanks for clarifying that. Um, I'm not, so I know that a lot of people use apple cider vinegar uh, every single day as a, a health habit. And I think for a lot of people, it works really well. And for those people, keep doing it. I've tried it off and on over the years as I've tried a million other things. Um, it's just not anything that I resonated with. So I don't do it on a regular basis. I don't even do it on an occasional basis, but I know about it and I, I've studied it and researched it. And it can be a very complementary habit for a lot of people. So I'm not opposed to it at all. Uh, in terms of you know, things that we need to do every day, my um, bias, my approach to nutrition and diet and the whole foods is organic quality whole foods. And then to look at traditional diets, to look specifically at your ancestors. Where did they come from uh, in Europe or where did they come from in Japan or China or India or Southeast Asia, wherever your ancestors came from, if you go back two or three or 400 years and look at the diet that they were consuming, you're not gonna find any candy bars and you're not gonna find any processed foods. You're gonna find that their diet was very simple, whole foods, organic quality whole foods. So whole grains, not processed grains, beans, seeds, nuts, root vegetables, land vegetables, vine, vine vegetables, green leafy vegetables, naturally fermented foods, because all those foods I just mentioned can be fermented uh, and supplemented with um, chicken, fish, birds, fowl, etc. And maybe in some cultures, a small amount of uh, organic dairy or 
uh, yogurt or kefir or things like that. So that, that, those foods make up the whole foods cornucopia wherever you travel around the world. So those are the most basic food groups and the most basic foods. Great, great question, Kimberly. And she had a, a quick follow-up. Could you mention, you know, some of the negative things that occur when drinking out of, you know, say bottled water, like from the plastic and things like that? Well, Carol could talk to this. Carol Montgomery could, talk, could answer that question probably better uh, than I can. Uh, you know, there's uh, different types of plastic, uh, different type of um uh, anyway, Carol, you, you, you talk about, you can answer that question. Well, you're absolutely right. There's things that leach. I may be BPA free, but it still will leach stuff. And if you have it and it sits in the sun, it's even worse. So just, uh, if you can avoid, um, plastic bottles, except those, those blue bottles there, um, those are very, very healthy plastic. You talked about that um, on Monday and, and they, those make great water bottles. Yeah, but, yes. it's a pharmaceutical grade plastic that doesn't leach anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I would suggest something like that or uh, stainless steel. Um, and you can, I've got, this is my stainless steel bottle and it's, it keeps my warm water warm for a long time. It's got double thickness or glass bottles. Yeah. Thank you, Carol. Thank, thank you, Carol. A collaborative effort. I love it. Um, any other last questions or, or comments? Um, I think we've pretty much gone around the room. So um, thank you, everyone, for, for joining us live. Um, hey, Brian, can oh, I? Yes. <laughs> It's that voice here. <laughs> I know who that is. I recognize In your that. ear. <clears throat> Excuse me. For those of us who do have a well, do you still recommend the same carbon block type filter on, on our system? Yes, yes. But if you have your own well, you should get your water tested at least twice a year. Uh, a well is dipping into groundwater. And even if it's very deep, Groundwater everywhere, you know, it could test uh, healthy on one day, but then, you know, heavy rains come through and the groundwater changes, the quality of the groundwater changes. So you really need to be super careful with well water. Again, uh, the well, the water in the well might be really good, but then it's traveling through pipes to get to your house. And those pipes can uh, often contribute various contaminants. So even if I had a well and the water tested perfect, I would still recommend a point of use filter for your drinking and cooking water at your kitchen sink. And yes, I would recommend the solid carbon block filter. Thank you. That was a great question, Robin. Thank you for <laughs> catching my attention. Um, so, so thank you everyone for, for joining our awesome Synergy call powered by Regenerous. We're just so grateful for this abundant group of live people. Uh, we're extremely grateful for everyone that reviews this afterwards. And the most extraordinary thing that any of us can do is share what we know is good. I just wanted to do a couple plugs. Um, so uh, quickly for me, I do actually, uh, I heard Russell talk, I actually make all my water before I go to bed and I have all the jugs ready um, so that I know exactly how much I need to drink every day. And that helps me very much. And I use kind of the time format. So that works really well. Uh, but I want to promote Russell's book. I hope you guys are going to be able to see it. I'm going to try to get in. Wait. Um, it's, that's what's bad with these screens, guys. Here, I'll hold it way back here. <laughs> okay, so this is Russell's. He's written many books. I encourage you to look him up. But this book is The No Diet Way to Complete Health. And it's a fabulous book. Marion was talking about it earlier. I encourage you to take a look at this as well as if you go to the center of functional nutrition.net um, there's so plethora or wealth of amazing information that's on that website um, i encourage you even russell offers a complimentary 30 minute um, cons consultation call with him 
So, you know, if, if you need more information after this, go on that website, you can um, schedule that and talk more personally with him. It truly helped me. Um, and he's just has so much great information of mixing, you know, what you're putting in your body and, and had he had me track mine for a full week. And that was a big job for me to do. But it really told me uh, quite a bit of things that I could shift. And, you know, I was very, very grateful. So there's, there's also their YouTube channel, wonderful information there that you can look at the Center of Functional Nutrition. Um, so, you know, please do a little bit more homework. I know he did touch on the seven root causes, but there's a lot more information on the website and a lot of great videos. So please share this out. Um, it's really important that we do try to heal our, ourselves. Uh, the body is a miracle and can if it's provided the right hydration and nutrition. So we owe it to ourselves to, to you know, educate ourselves and, and care about others and, and share this amazing message that Russell has been sharing you know, for decades now after meeting Dr. B. So thank you so much for being on this call, Russell. Thank you so much, Brian, for hosting it. And Megan, we love you too. I know you're not the, the uh, picture on right now, but we're just grateful to everybody. So please share this call. It will be on our YouTube channel. Uh, so subscribe to Regenerous' YouTube channel and share this out.